What's up guys, I'm Chirag and welcome to part 2.1 of the tutorial series on AWS CloudFormation. So guys, in this tutorial, we will go through the parameters within template in AWS CloudFormation. So generally, when we need any user input or any sort of user interaction, at that point of time, we can opt out for defining parameters within the template. And defining parameters in the template is totally optional and it's not mandatory. Right, so I just want you to take that note. So let's go back to our template that we have used to create the bucket in the previous tutorial, as you can see on my screen, right? So this is the template that we have used to create bucket with the name SRCECDE-CF, correct? So as I mentioned that we are creating the bucket with the static name and that bucket name has been defined in the template itself. But now what we want to do is we want the user to enter the bucket name, right? We want to take the input from the user in the form of string, right? For the bucket name while creating the stack or at runtime. So for that, we need to define parameters, right? So let's get started. So I will define parameters below description. So I will say parameters, right? Followed by so each and everything starts with the logical ID or the logical name within the template, right? So for taking an input for the S3 bucket, we will be defining the logical ID under parameters. So I will say S3 bucket name, something like this, right? So you can enter whatever you want as per your requirement, but just make sure that it should be unique throughout the template. So that's basically the logical ID or the logical name, which will be followed by the optional description. So within description, I will simply say, enter S3 bucket name, something like this, correct? Again, description is optional. If you want, you can mention, if you don't want, you can skip that part, which will be followed by the type now this type property is mandatory, right? So here we need to tell that what type of input we are expecting from the user. So whether it be a string or a number, right? So at this point of time, we are expecting the name of the bucket, which is going to be the string, right? So the type is going to be string, which is the alphanumeric input from the user. So that's type. So it supports uh, multiple types like number, list, AWS specific service type, right? So I will show you in a bit which all type are supported by the parameters or the AWS cloud formation. So at this point of time, our requirement is that we are expecting the input in the form of string. So that's where we are defining type as string. So I think uh, that's all for the template. And apart from that, we need to make one more change. We have to replace the static name on line number 14 with exclamation ref. That is for reference. What we want to refer as a bucket name, that is the logical ID that we have defined under the parameters that is S3 bucket name. So copy and paste it over here, right? So. Now, uh, if you want simple input from the user in the form of string and you want to create the bucket, then this template looks good, right? Now, in case if you want to uh, come up with certain constraint that the entered input for the bucket name should have minimum of three characters length and it should have maximum certain length, then you need to add more properties under parameters, right? So for that, for example, I want the user to input at least three characters in terms of bucket name. So what I will do is I will add a property saying minimum length, that is min length should be three. And I also want to minimum length, right? Apart from that, I also want the user to not enter more than 10 characters. So I will define max length should be 10 right now i also want the user should only enter the characters and he should not be able to enter any special characters or any numbers it should be between a to z that's it so what i can do is i can define a property saying allowed pattern 
and here I can simply mention the regular expression. So I will say square braces a hyphen z that is caps a to z and it can be small a to z right and that's it. I don't want the user to enter any numbers or any special characters. Now uh, this template looks good. So now let's go to the AWS cloud formation console. Click on this three lines from the top left corner. Click on stacks and click on create stack. Now here uh, within prerequisite, we will say template is ready. Within specified template, we will select upload a template file because we don't have that template on the S3 bucket. So that's where we need to choose a file and I will select S3 underscore bucket dot YAML. And we will say next. Now here in this step two, we need to give the bucket, sorry, stack name. That is, I will say S3 bucket. I'll say S3 bucket, something like this. And here now you can see that under parameters, we have this S3 bucket name, right? So this is basically representing the logical ID that we have defined on line number five, that is the S3 bucket name. And you can also see the description that we have that is enter S3 bucket name, which is the part of the description on line number six that we have defined, right? So now let's try to enter the bucket name. So let me enter only two characters since we have kept the constraint of at least uh, three characters, right? So I will say a, a something like this and it should not be able to create this tag. It should throw an exception, right? So I'll say next. Now here it didn't throw in any exception, right? Let's move on. We will leave all the option as it is at this point of time on step three and we will say next again. And finally we will say create stack. So now as you can see, it threw an exception saying parameter S3 bucket name must contain at least three characters, right? So now our validation is working fine. So let's go back, say previous, previous. Now here, uh, let me say S R C E C D E and followed by some numbers, one, two, three, something like this, right? Now again, it should throw an exception saying the allowed pattern is this, 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 right? So let's say next, next, and we will say create stack. Now again, as you can see, it threw an exception saying parameter S3 bucket name must match pattern whatever pattern or the regular expression that we have defined right so the regular expression say that it can't be a number right so let's go back again previous previous and we will simply say src cde cf cf something like this and i will say next next and we will say create stack. And again, it return an exception saying must contain at least 10 characters. So uh, let's go back again. Previous, let's see how many characters are this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 10, okay. and 11. So let's keep it like this, SRC, -E -C -D -E -C -F. Next, next. And finally, we will say create stack. And now it should not throw any exception. So as you can see, creation is in progress. The resource creation has been initiated. Let's wait. In the meantime, let's jump to the S3 management console. Let's reload this again. Let's search for SRC -E -C -D -E -C -F. As you can see here, we have the bucket saying SRC -E -C -D -E -C -F. And this should be completed by now. As you can see, the stack creation has been completed. And here we have the bucket, right? So that is how you can define parameters and you can put in certain constraints that you want the user to follow. Now let's look at the template once more. So here, as I mentioned, uh, we can have multiple types and we can have many other properties apart from these three that we have defined. So let's have a look. So here I have opened the documentation and here you can see properties and the list of properties that is allowed. So we have used allowed pattern. We have not used allowed values and many other. 
we have used description max length and min length so these are the list of properties uh, that you can define right so you can explore uh, as and when you required correct and apart from that if we talk about the type then here are the list of data types that it supports so right now we were dealing with the string and apart from string we have number we have list comma delimited list aws specific parameter types and ssm parameter types right so when we talk about aws specific parameter types then here are the list of uh, aws specific service or the parameters that it supports right like ec2 availability zone image id and whatnot right so you can explore as and uh, when it is required but i will take you through as and when uh, we move on in the upcoming tutorials correct so that's where uh, you can go through this parameters and the type so i will share the link of this documentation in the video description right so now let's move on let's look at one more example let's go back to sublime so here i have one more template saying ec2.yaml right so let me take you through this template so here we have aws template format version that's going to be the 2010.09.09 that's kind of the latest uh, template version that we have and then we have description saying create ec2 instance and then we have parameters right so before going uh, into the parameters let's look at resources so here we have resources under that uh, we have this logical id this is logical id and this is type so what is the type that is aws ec2 instance because here we are going to create the ec2 instance right so that's where the type is AWS EC2 instance. So if you look at this S3 underscore bucket dot YAML, here the type is AWS S3 bucket because here we wanted to create the S3 bucket, right? So that's where we have defined the type as AWS S3 bucket. So here we are dealing with the instance. So that's where the type is going to be this, right? So apart from that, we have properties. We have instance type and the image ID. So this image ID basically refers to the uh, Ubuntu 20 point something version right and instance type is basically coming from the parameters that we have defined so here we have defined reference to what instance type parameter so here we have defined the instance type parameter as the logical id under parameters and here we want some sort of user interaction or user input in terms of selecting the type of instance right so that's where we have defined that under parameters so this is again on line number five, it's logical ID with description on line number six. And again on line number seven, uh, we have defined type as string because we want that input as a part of the string, right? And here we have used one more property that is default. So by default, t2.micro instance will be selected, right? And then on line number nine, we have defined allowed value. So here we are not giving any text box for the user to enter that value, right? So here we are going to give the user a drop down from where he will be able to select uh, t2 micro m1.small m1.large and these are the three options that we are giving to the user right so here we are not uh, taking any input in terms of free text so that's where it's going to be a drop down when we use allowed values and again uh, we have the description saying enter t2.micro or whatever that is default is t2.micro right so let's have a look. Let's go back to the console. Let me delete this first, delete stack. And it should be finished in a while. It's completed. Let's create a stack again. We will select upload a template file, choose a file. I will say ec2.yaml, say next. Give a stack name, I will say EC2 instance. Now here, as you can see, what we have that is instance type parameter. And here we can see enter t2.micro, m1.small or whatever default is t2.micro, right? Now, if you have noticed one thing that we have defined two description in here, right? That is on line number six, as well as on line number 13. So the description on line number six was overwritten by the description on line number 13 right so that's what i wanted to show you 
right now here uh, as you can see we have the drop down so here we can select m1.small or t2.micro or whatever instance so we'll say t2.micro we will say next we will say next again and finally we will say create stack so while the stack is being created let's navigate to ec2 management console Click on instances from the left panel. So here, as you can see, one of the instance is in pending state. It's being initialized, right? So that's basically coming from the EC2 instance stack that we have created. So now it's up and running and this template should be completed as you can see uh, the stack has been created successfully and here we also have the instance right that is t2.micro and now what we can do is we will simply delete this tag and that instance should also get terminated so let's wait So as you can see deletion is in progress and here as you can see the instance is shutting down and it will be terminated soon right so that's all i wanted to cover in terms of parameters right so well guys that's it for now and as usual if you want me to do tutorial on any use case or service then please leave them below and i will try my best to come up with the tutorial as soon as possible and if you have any queries or comments, then again, please leave them below and don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel and see you next time.